Congratulations, you received your very first 3D printer or you bought one. But what next? You cannot just put an STL file into your 3D printer and expect to get something out of it. You need a slicer to do that, going from an STL file into a G-code file that the printer will understand. So in this video, I'm going to talk all about the basics within Cura Slicer, how to add your 3D printer, how to add a model and how to slice your very first model and get something nice out of your 3D printer right here on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hey, Zach here. When I just started with 3D printing, my very first slicing software that I used was Cura Slicer. And back then, <laughs> it was looking a whole lot differently than it does look now. And even more printers are added to this slicer software. But how does it work? But first, let me add a brand new 3D printer to Cura Slicer. So this is Cura Slicer, how to add a 3D printer. It depends on if this 3D printer that you have is already in Cura Slicer, yes or no. Well, let's go and add printer. Well, in this case, this is not an Ultimaker 3D printer, so we click on non-Ultimaker printer. We click on non-networked printers. We click on that, we close this. So for example, let's add a Creality 3D printer. We scroll to the C from Creality, we open it, and here you have a whole bunch of Creality 3D printers. Let's go for the uh, Creality and the 3 V3 SE. Let's take that one for example. Printer name is already standing here, Creality Ender 3 V3 SE. So click on add. And now you will get the printer settings, X to 20, Y to 20, Z height to 50. The build plate shape is rectangular. It has a heated bed and the G-code flavor is Marlin. Then if we make this a little bit bigger. So here is the G-code flavor. Here are some already G-codes in order to get your printer prepped for the print. There's a G28, that means it's going to home to your 0, 0.0 and some other things that are needed for your printer. So next. So this is the build plate for the Creality and the 3 V3 SE. If you need to add a custom 3D printer because the profile isn't available in Cura Slicer, then add printer, non-Ultimaker printer, a non-networked printer. We close this and then custom here you select custom FFF printer. Here we set the name in uh, whatever the name of your 3D printer brand is and the model name. Then we click on add and then we need to give in our printer settings. If you are not sure about the measurements of your 3D printer, go to the website of the manufacturer and check what the build volume or the printing volume of your 3D printer is. Add it here. We are going to say like uh, 300 times 300 and is that height like 400, make it fancy. So the build plate, it is a rectangular. We have a heated bed. We are using the Z-code flavor. And as you can see here, we have already a starting G-code with the G28 homing. It is always needed for a 3D printer before starting a print to home all access. And it's always called a G28. And then some other basic things for this 3D printer. Then we click on next. And here we have a custom 3D printer. So now we are going to check the basics here in Cura Slicer. So here we have generic PLA 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So if you click on it, you can select here which kind of filament brand you are using. If you don't want to go too fancy, just uh, take generic and then select one of the settings here. I'm going for the PLA because that is what I most of the time use for all my models and um, it's working fine. On the right hand side, we have all the settings where we can play with if we are going to import a model. How do we do that? On the left hand side, next to the name of the 3D printer, this is a folder. If you click on there, you will get a folder structure and you will select the model that you want to use. Let's, uh, let's go for a uh, little Charmander, low poly remastered from uh, Floalistic. We open it and we have here this little Charmander. It's a low poly. It's looking nice. If you imported the model, you will get also some options on the left hand side. What does it do? Because you need to select it and now you can play with it. Basically, this is the movement. You can move a model always over the build plate and you will get it back if you are going to say like right mouse button, center, select it. And now it's exactly in the middle of your build plate. You can also size the model. This is, these are the measurements of the model on the build plate and everything is at 100%. I have here uniform scaling selected. So that means if I'm selecting the Z height instead of 100 to 50, so half of the size, everything follows along. If you 
don't have this selected and you are going to say like 100, you will get a very weird looking Charmander. So you don't want to have that. We are going to do it like that. Here is reset. It always resets if something happens. So this button here does do the rotation. You can change it in different kind of directions on the horizontal plane, on the vertical plane. You can also put it upside down. And you can also do it in the other way all three axes. If for some reason the model is uh, like this slice, it happens, you select it and then you will select face to align with the build plate. I click on it and then here and it is like that. Now it's not on center, right mouse button, center selected and now it's back. Then we have also the mirror function mode. I don't know, I have never used it, but just imagine having one part and you want to have exactly the opposite from that same part. With the mirror mode, you can make an exact copy on the other side or mirrored function. Here we have also mesh type normal. This is the uh, per models setting. So if you have multiple models on the build plate, I don't know if you want to rush it, yes or no. But if you are printing one model at a time, then this option is not for you at the moment. And then we have also support blocker if there are some parts that you don't want to have any support. But on the right hand side, we have all print settings. I'm this type of guy that always go for standard or normal settings, but there are also super quality 1.12 millimeter. We have dynamic quality 0.16 millimeters, 0.2 for the standard quality and low quality 0.28. But what does that mean? This is the print height. That means the lower the nozzle is to the build plate or the previous printed line. When you're just starting the first layer, the first layer would be in our case 0.2 millimeters high so we are going for the standard quality the layer height of course it is 0.2 we have then also some other settings and all of the settings or most of the times these settings are linked to other settings within the quality if you change something you will get a little notification about it and if you hover over it you will see exactly what it means walls are very important if you are 3d printing models or parts because that tells how strong a model needs to be it happened also with me that legs were breaking off because two walls you have the outer wall and you have one inner wall it's always better to use like three or four walls then we have the top and the bottom let's expand that as well the top layers four layers and four layers for the bottom and then infill infill is also very important when it comes to 3d printing it helps to support the previous layers and also when it had this 3d printed or some other things then it will be printed nicely on top of the infill so if you are printing a calibration cube for example uh, after after the infill first layer is being printed on top of it closing the whole thing up and uh, gives something very rigid and you can squeeze the walls, but it doesn't break. For the material, we are using PLA, and in this case, normally 200 degrees would be sufficient enough. In my experience, however, 205, 210 degrees is better. So in this case, we are going to increase the printing temperature to 210 degrees. My experience, I have printed so many models, 210 is for me the sweet spot. The print speed for the uh, Creality and the 3 V3SE is 180 millimeters. I will leave the print speed as it is. You have also uh, the initial layer height speed is 30 millimeters. The walls, for example, are printed at half of that speed, so 90 millimeters per second. The travel speed, so when the print head is not printing, going from one point to another point is going 250 millimeters per second. The initial layer speed is 30 millimeters per second. It is, it is slow, but it makes the adhesion on the build plate way better. Most of the times it's called first layer, if I'm not mistaken. There's a reason why it is 30 millimeters. Then we have a section called travel. The travel, so if your print head is moving from one point to another, it's called travel. So enable retraction is very important to avoid that the hot end isn't oozing the filament out. So these are the basic settings. And then the cooling, we have enable cooling. Of course, if you are printing with PLA, you will need some parts cooling. It's very important that the layers that were printed previously are cooled before a new layer is printed on top of it. And, and it helps also to get some amazing print results in the end. And then these are the support settings. The support structure that I usually use are the three supports. 
Those are finer, more easier to remove. Support placement everywhere and zigzag everything we leave as it is. And then the build plate adhesion. In this case, skirt is selected. It's a thin line printed around the model without touching the model. Skirt line count, I have it on three. You can go for more or less. And then we have some other things that are not needed for this tutorial. So now we are going to slice the model. So once the model is sliced, the model will look like this. If you click on preview, you will see exactly how the model is being printed or how you can expect to see the model coming out. Just some few supports here and a few supports right over here, also for the eyes. These are basically all the red areas that you see right over here. It has a, a certain degree of angle. You can change that if needed, but you are going probably for some nice print results and that is how you will get it. So eight hours and 25 minutes. So how to save it? You can go for a SD card, micro SD card. You'll put it in something like this. You add it in there. The SD card, you put in the SD card reader and that one goes in an USB slot from your computer or laptop. Export the model to the SD card. You click on the arrow and then you are select the one that you want to save it to click on there and then save to removable drive and now once the model is on your usb thumb drive or on your sd card take that card take the usb thumb drive put it inside of the 3d printer and start your very first 3d print have fun you know what is also fun check out this video right over here where i talk more about slicers and 3d printers right here